In this video, we'll look at what's called the Ackermann steering geometry. In order to properly explain the Ackermann steering geometry, we first need to introduce the definition of a wheel steer angle and the side slip of a tire. And also we need a proper understanding of the kinematics of a rigid body, which was introduced in the previous video. So let's start with the two basic definitions. The wheel steer angle that is denoted with delta ij, where the first index stands for either i equal to f for front or i equal to r for rear. And the second index stands for either j equal to l for left or j equal to r for right. So it's defined separately for each of the four wheels of the vehicle. And it is the angle between the orientation of the wheel and the xv axis about the zv axis. To illustrate this, suppose this is our vehicle with the four wheels in light gray. In red, we have our vehicle reference point and in yellow, we have the coordinate axis of the vehicle frame XV and YV. In purple, we see the wheel center points and in green, the wheels orientation. And finally, in white, we see the wheel steer angles of the front left wheel, the front right wheel, the rear right wheel and the rear left wheel. In this course, we'll make the general assumption that the steer angle of the rear wheels is zero. However, as a remark, there was a trend to have four wheel steering on cars in the 1980s and 90s. And it's also again seeing a revival, especially in luxury cars. And the reason is that it can be used to improve the maneuverability and also the handling of a car. But of course, on the other hand, you need to build in a second steering system, which is a significant cost factor for the production of the car. Next, the slip angle alpha ij is the angle between the velocity of the wheel center point vij and the wheel's orientation where again the slip angle is defined separately for each tire so the index i stands for front and rear and the index j for left and right and what this means intuitively is something that you probably associate with driving at very high speeds namely that a tire doesn't entirely move along its orientation but it can also move a little sideways and so the slip angle alpha ij is the angle between the actual movement of the tire at this point in time and the wheels orientation at this point in time so this intuitive sideward slip of a tire is indicated with the slip angle. In order to explain the Ackermann steering geometry, we need to look at the kinematic four-wheel model of a vehicle. The kinematic four-wheel model is built on one main assumption, namely that there is no tire slip for all four tires of the vehicle. Moreover, the vehicle is considered as a rigid body and the four tires are fixed to the vehicle. With what we know about the kinematics of a rigid body, namely that the rigid body rotates about an instantaneous center of rotation at each point in time, it follows that the wheels must have a certain orientation for this to be possible. To look at this more closely, suppose this in white here is our vehicle with the four wheels in light gray. If the vehicle is a rigid body, that means that there exists an instantaneous center of rotation in red here 
about which the vehicle performs a pure rotational movement at this point in time. In other words, for every point of the vehicle, like this one, the local velocity vector has to be perpendicular to the connection between the point and the instantaneous center of rotation because that's the very definition of a rotational movement. Now, in addition, we assume that the wheels are fixed to the vehicle and we make the kinematic assumption of no tire slip, meaning that the local velocity at the wheel center point points exactly in the direction of the wheel orientation. Therefore, all wheel orientations have to be perpendicular to the connection between the wheel center point and the instantaneous center of rotation. So for the kinematic assumption, this combination of wheel orientations that is shown in this figure is really a necessary condition for the vehicle to move at all. Except, of course, when all wheels are pointing straight, which can be considered as a limiting case where the instantaneous center of rotation is at infinity. What should be emphasized is that this geometry implies that the wheel steer angles of the two front wheels are generally not identical unless the vehicle is going straight. And for an intuitive explanation of this, assume that the vehicle is driving a stationary curve, meaning it's driving with constant wheel steer angles. And in this case, the inner part of the vehicle will drive on a circle with a smaller radius than the outer part of the vehicle. And hence, these two steering angles have to be different. Now the Ackermann steering geometry is defined as the combination of all such admissible wheel steer angles for the front wheels of the kinematic four wheel model. On a short historical side note, the Ackermann steering geometry is named after Rudolf Ackermann, a British German businessman who patented the pivot steering system for horse carriages that was originally developed by the German engineer Georg Lankensberger. In order to see how this Ackermann geometry is realized, or at least approximately realized in practice, let's look at the main structure of a practical steering system. So consider this schematic sketch of a steering system where in white we see the front axle and in light gray the left and the right tire. These tires, or better the wheels, are connected to the steering knuckles, which are shown in red, and which rotate about the king pins, which are shown in yellow. So in other words, these king pins are the pivot points of the knuckles and hence also the pivot points of the wheels. The rest of the steering system is really there to perform the pivoting of the steering knuckles. And these pivot points in blue here, the steering pivot points, are placed to the inside of the king pins. And that's exactly what causes the Ackermann geometry in this practical steering system. In other words, if both of the steering pivots are moved to the left, for instance, then the effect of the wheel steer angle on the left wheel will be much bigger than the effect on the wheel steer, wheel steer angle of the right wheel. So if the whole geometry of the steering system is designed carefully, what you will get is an approximate Ackermann steering system. As for the other parts of the steering system, the purple parts are called the left and the right tie rod. In green, we see the rack and pinion unit. And 
in orange, we see the steering column with the steering wheel. As a final remark, this is of course only a rough structure of a prototypical steering system. In practice, there are of course many more different variations of steering systems and also a lot of more detailed parts and additional features such as power steering and so on. For the purposes of this course on the fundamentals of vehicle dynamics and control, however, it's sufficient to have a basic idea of the structure of a practical steering system.